So we all know that muscle growth, right? Getting the muscle size bigger is hypertrophy, cellular enlargement. Instead of splitting to make new cells, muscles respond to resistance by increasing the size of those individual cells. We know how it works. We've seen it in gyms all across the globe at this point. So let's explain the science and why it doesn't matter whether we're training dynamically or isometrically in order to get those big size gains that we've always been looking for. What's up guys? I love exercise science. Let's get into this. But before we do, I wanted to say thank you to our new No Limit Squad patrons, Jose Hopkins, Lewis Lindsey Jr. and Jason Hanna. I appreciate y'all showing your support for that exclusive content for Patreon slash No Limit Squad. I really appreciate your support. Now let's get into the nerdy exercise science. So hypertrophy one of the reasons why static exercise is so effective for improving dynamic performance is that both static and dynamic training produce similar hypertrophic effects see it doesn't really matter the biology what we can do with relative certainty is make sure that we have the scientific evidence to show that we can get bigger with static exercise and honestly one of the more obvious examples before we get into it are just seeing ballerinas and ice skaters and their calf musculature and how defined, sometimes big, how defined they are. All right, so let's talk about heavy loading. Usually expressed as a person's maximal strength or single rep, AKA one RM, which everybody knows is one rep max, um, is usually recommended as the best way to really maximize the muscle hypertrophy stimulus with resistance training. But there's little evidence to support this statement because it's really unclear as to how exactly these heavier training loads would provide that signal for greater muscle hypertrophy compared to lifting lighter weights till failure because honestly both conditions would result in a large amount of muscle fibers being recruited anyway because we're taking the muscle to failure the point of muscle growth and progressive overload is to take the muscles to failure whether you're taking the muscles to failure with a light load and a ton of reps or a heavier load with fewer reps as long as we take the reps to failure the body to failure that is the stimulus that the body is looking for all that to say high loads build strength high volume builds endurance we knew that muscular fatigue generates growth of course, there's some overlap as well, but the principle stands. There was a study in the Journal of Applied Physiology where subjects were instructed to train to deep fatigue, aka muscle failure, using either 90% or 30% of their maximum training load. When the participants in that study were scanned with MRI scans and advanced histochemical testing, it was discovered that both training sessions produced similar levels of growth as long as the training was taken to failure. There's that word again. The conclusion, muscle fatigue triggers hypertrophy, not load or volume, muscle fatigue. Did we lift until there's just nothing left in the tank? That is what we are looking for. And if you think about it, right, this principle literally explains exactly why traditionally strength athletes use very low reps with heavy weights and long breaks between sets. It allows them to exhibit the highest levels of force without getting tired. Because if we wanted just pure strength, the exhaustion would simply get in the way of the training volume and the frequency with no benefit. On the other hand, you'll get the bodybuilders and sculptors that tend to focus on higher reps with relatively lighter weights, relatively with intensity techniques like drop sets, force reps, pre-exhausted sets where you work the body until it starts to burn and then count the reps. Those are brutal, by the way. And rest pause reps. Those methods all allow them to deeply fatigue the muscle, simply to a level that heavier loads just won't allow. But you rarely find those methods in strength training regimens. So you won't see like the big burly power lifters like uh, Eddie Hall and Half Thor doing those types of training modalities because they're training for strength. And honestly, this makes sense to pretty much anyone who has spent some amount of time in the training world because we all kind of know intrinsically that athletes train by lifting huge loads and remain relatively small. Think about Olympic lifters, right? They're able to move a lot of weight, but they're not huge power lifters of the way they train. Meanwhile, others can get away with lifting lighter loads and grow much larger muscles. Bodybuilders, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to, to me, you. You know what I mean. The key to developing strength is repeated high muscular 
force high muscular force and if you remember our force velocity curve you haven't seen that video by the way it's absolutely beautiful here's a link right here check that out we talk about how training at either the lower or the higher end of the force velocity curve is truly going to determine the outcome on whether you're training for strength hypertrophy or endurance strength high muscular force hypertrophy muscular fatigue but it's not to say that bodybuilders can't be strong i mean have you seen them look at them however many body but not all many bodybuilders are not hugely strong we're also not saying that strength has nothing to do with bodybuilding i mean of course that's false that doesn't even make any sense it does because in order to progressively fatigue their muscles over time bodybuilders are forced to incrementally lift heavier loads to progressively fatigue their muscles and prevent habituation aka bodybuilders aren't developing strength for its own sake they're learning to use that strength and the heavy load it permits as a tool to fatigue their muscles more and more deeply so now for the elephant in the room if muscular fatigue is what causes growth can isometric holds generate fatigue as well as dynamic repetition if we just talk about it logically math and physics the answer is yes Muscular fatigue is directly proportionate to the sum of muscular contraction. How do we measure muscular contraction? Muscular force multiplied by time. Muscular fatigue is directly proportional to muscular force times time. That's the equation. Muscular force times time. So are we hitting the fatigue that we need in order to grow our muscles, like increase the size? Yes. Fatigue can be defined by the amount of force our muscles can generate in a given period of time. More force in the same length of time results in more fatigue. This is sometimes known in hypertrophy science as TUT, time under tension, my favorite stuff. And having the right time under tension leads to greater muscle fiber recruitment and growth. But what are your thoughts? Did you know about this before? Go ahead and comment down below. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to drop a like, go ahead and comment, and we will see you in the next video.